Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Rear Admiral John Bonner. I'm the commander of the First Coast Guard District here in Boston, Massachusetts. And in this case, I am the police for the Coast Guard Search and Rescue Operation uh, for the overseas Yesterday afternoon, uh, we were notified by the operator of the submersible vessel that it was uh, overdue and it had five uh, persons on board uh, the submersible. So we're working very closely at this point uh, to make sure that we're doing everything that we can do uh, to locate uh, the submersible and rescue uh, those on board. Our thoughts are with uh, the crew members and the families uh, on uh, of those on board the submersible at this time, and we are doing everything that we can do uh, to make sure that uh, we can uh, locate uh, and rescue uh, those on board. So after receiving the call, uh, we uh, launched, uh, well, reached out to uh, the vessel Polar Prince and began a surface search uh, looking for uh, the submersible. At the same time, uh, we launched a C-130 uh, aircraft to search, to conduct an aerial search, uh, both visual and radar of uh, the scene. We've subsequently uh, coordinated with uh, the Canadian uh, Coast Guard and Canadian Armed Forces to deploy additional assets uh, to the scene. The Canadians have had a C-130 aircraft searching as well, in addition to also having a P-8 uh, submarine uh, search uh, aircraft uh, deploy as well and put uh, sonar buoys in the water uh, in attempt to uh, listen. This, uh, the location of the search is approximately 900 miles uh, east of Cape Cod uh, in a water depth of uh, roughly 13,000 feet. It is a, a remote area uh, and it is uh, a challenge to conduct a uh, search in that remote area, but we are deploying all available assets to uh, make sure that uh, uh, we can uh, locate uh, the craft and uh, uh, rescue uh, the, the people on board. Going into uh, this evening, we will continue to uh, fly aircraft and move additional uh, vessels into uh, the area. Uh, in this remote part of our uh, search and rescue responsibility, oftentimes we rely on commercial operators to be the first vessels uh, on scene. And so we've been in touch with additional commercial vessels that are operating in the area, as well as uh, initiating uh, the movement of additional Canadian Coast Guard assets uh, and U.S. Coast Guard uh, surface asset uh, into the area over the course of the next couple of days. Uh, adding to the complexity of this case is uh, the fact that uh, this was a uh, submersible vessel and so we need to make sure that we're looking both on the surface uh, for uh, the vessel if it had uh, uh, surfaced uh, back uh, to uh, the water, um, but it somehow uh, lost uh, communications with the vessel, and that's what the aircraft and the surface search vessel is allowing us to do right now. But we're also having to uh, search in the water column, and we're doing that right now uh, with the use of uh, sonar buoys and sonar on uh, the uh, ship that's out there to listen for uh, any sounds that uh, we can uh, detect in the water column. Over the course of the next couple days, uh, we anticipate adding additional capability uh, to conduct um, additional uh, search in the water as uh, those uh, commercial assets uh, arrive on scene. Again, uh, our thoughts are with uh, the families uh, and the crew members uh, on board the submersible and uh, we're working very closely with uh, all U.S. Uh, and international partners uh, to um, provide any capability that we can provide uh, to search uh, for uh, the, the overdue vessel and uh, rescue uh, the crew members on board. At this point, uh, we'll take uh, questions. So
So uh, in terms of uh, locating the overdue submersible, we have to make sure that we're looking on both uh, the surface using aerial and, and uh, surface vessels, but then expanding into underwater uh, search as well. Right now our capability is limited to uh, sonar buoys and listening for sounds, um, but uh, you know we're working very hard to uh, increase the capability. We understand from the operator of the vessel that the vessel uh, was designed with a 96 hour uh, 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 sustainment uh, capability if there was an emergency on board. Uh, and so uh, we're using that time, making the best use of every moment of that time to uh, locate the vessel. Sir, can you talk about who was the image the British At this point, I'm not in a position to uh, confirm the identity of anybody uh, on board uh, the vessel. Um, out of uh, respect for the families, we're uh, you know, going through the notification process uh, and more updates will be uh, forthcoming. That, that's absolutely part of the overall planning for uh, this search case. Right now we're focused on locating the vessel, but at the same time, if we find this vessel uh, in the water, then we will have to uh, effect some sort of rescue. We're coordinating, uh, reaching out to uh, different uh, partners within the U.S. Uh, Navy, uh, within the Canadian uh, Armed Forces, and within private industry to understand what uh, underwater rescue capability might be available. So uh, at this moment, uh, we're focused on uh, the search uh, and uh, understanding the capabilities uh, of the vessels uh, that are uh, deploying to the scene. And what is your sonar measure So uh, the sonar capabilities uh, within the sonar buoys and within uh, the hull of the commercial vessel that uh, is out there operating on site, those aren't Coast Guard sonars. Um, they are capable of listening uh, to a depth of uh, 13,000 feet, as I understand it. So uh, in terms of uh, the square mileage of the search, I don't have that number uh, right at this moment, but it includes both a surface area that we're looking at and a subsurface area. And so we'll get you the, the exact number for uh, the square mileage of the search. In terms of the hours, uh, we understood that that was uh, 96 hours of uh, rescue uh, cap or emergency capability uh, from, from the operator. And so uh, we anticipate that there's somewhere between uh, 70 to uh, the full 96 hours available at this point. So it's certainly uh, the purpose of the submarine was to, um, as I understand, the purpose of the submersible was to uh, provide uh, opportunity to visit the wreck site and explore the wreck site. Uh, so that's, that's a possibility. Uh, again, right now our focus is getting on as much capability into uh, the area as we can and understanding that uh, full capability of those assets that are being deployed. Our uh, aerial assets that are being deployed have the capability to do both visual and radar searches, and, and the Canadian's uh, asset had the ability to drop sonar buoys and listen, and so we're using all that information to improve our search capability. So, uh, we're, we're uh, working through that right now, um, but uh, what we're really focused on uh, at the moment is really locating the vessel, which could either be in the surface or subsurface. And so we're bringing in technical expertise to understand uh, both uh, the dynamics of underwater uh, search uh, and uh, underwater rescue uh, operations. Okay. 
So uh, as uh, search and rescue pro professionals, uh, you know, we work very, very hard and, and our crews take this personally. Our first thoughts are with the, uh, the crew members and the families of uh, those on board. And so we want to make sure that we have done absolutely everything that we can do to uh, locate uh, their family members and bring them home safe. And so they're first and foremost in our thoughts uh, every moment of uh, this uh, search operation. Sir, how common are these threats to the pandemic in general? And how dangerous are they even without emergency taking place? I, I don't have uh, any details on how often uh, folks uh, visit uh, the wreck site there at Titanic. Uh, nor uh, the, any specific comments on the dangers involved. Certainly, uh, every time uh, ships go to sea, they encounter uh, hazards and dangers. Uh, and so uh, having properly prepared vessels, properly prepared uh, crew members, uh, and uh, making sure that you practice emergency procedures, good, good uh, um, practical advice for anybody that goes to sea. So uh, at this point, I'm not going to uh, dis discuss any information uh, about the families and communications with the families. Uh, and so we'll, we'll provide that uh, with uh, future updates. Any idea of the number of personnel searching? Does it come So uh, the Coast Guard has uh, two uh, C-130 aircraft. Uh, in addition to the command team that's uh, working here, we have two C-130 aircraft uh, deployed. The Canadians have a C-130 aircraft and a P-8 aircraft. Uh, we also have access to and, and uh, will launch this evening a uh, C-130 aircraft from the New York uh, National Guard uh, to make sure that we have uh, air assets, sufficient air assets up there. On the surface, we have the uh, commercial operator that's been uh, on site uh, and we're bringing additional uh, surface search assets into play, which will also bring in some subsurface uh, search capability. Last question, please. I understand from the operator that there was one uh, pilot or uh, submersible uh, commander operator on board and that there were four uh, mission specialists uh, on board is the term that the uh, operator uses for them. So five, five total. You have to ask the operator what that means. What, what we're focused on is finding those five people. Thank you very much for your time.